get notifications, and stay updated every time I post a challenge podcast by hitting the subscribe button. Thank you all, and hope you enjoy. Welcome back, and please help me welcome my guest this time, Miss Katie. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Glad we were able to make this happen. Uh, technical difficulties along the way, but of here course. we are. Yeah. <laughs> Let me start by asking, though, kind of how this year has been like for you, because it's kind of been a transition for us all. How has it been for you? Um, it's I mean, it started off. I'm very much into a routine. So like when um, the pandemic started, it threw me for a loop because I was like, Ugh. but then I kind of got into a new rhythm. And I mean, it's not ideal, but we're adjusting fine. So I'm working from home. I've been working from home since March. So I think it'll continue until January. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what, what was like the shutdown for you guys? Because where I'm at, at least, we just just started kind of reopening stuff. Like I want to say maybe a month ago for the most part. Um, I'm in Lexington, Kentucky. So we kind of reopened, I guess, early summer. But everything's like with masks and like, you know, smaller group settings and tables. There's a lot of like rules, but um, like I can go to Target. I can go out to eat like I can do stuff. Mm, yeah, they um, I think it was like three, three weeks ago. It's like the very first time that like indoor dining was just like made for us, which is like crazy. Wow. What like, are you in? Um, I'm in Jersey, but like where I'm at, it's about 10, 15 from Times Square. So it's like kind of like a city type thing. And oh, Times yeah. Square, when I tell you, I'm sure you can imagine like how packed it usually is on like mm-hmm. the normal. In the beginning of this, like you could probably see maybe two people in Times Square, which is crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> like the whole yeah. world just stopped, it felt like. But um, yeah, I want to get into some more... Um, obviously challenge and role rule questions now i'm not gonna ask you about your casting story so to speak but i want to ask like kind of what you were up to before going on to road rules and like was that kind of like your goal to get onto tv uh no i mean it's it's really not that exciting um i was a college student and i watched the real world i think it was hawaii or new orleans i don't know i liked both so whatever one was the latter. Um, and then at the end of like one of the episodes, it was like, do you want to be on the real world? And back then you sent in like a VHS casting tape. So I remember going to my friend's house and be like, I'm going to try out for the real world. I had no intention of being on road rolls, no interest, never even watched the show. Um, so I auditioned for real world and even said, do not put me on road rules. I'm not athletic. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that usually seems to be the way it goes. But, yeah. Um, one that you don't want to get onto. <laughs> what about like now though? Because obviously, like being years removed from being on TV, is like the challenge kind of something that like you organically try to maybe put behind you or say if like you know you're at the store and someone like comes up to you like oh you're Katie from this show and like wants a picture with you like how is that? For you is this challenge kind of something that you want to put behind you or is it just um well it's always awkward when that happens but it definitely happens less and less now um so i feel like if and i feel like when it does happen now they must be like hardcore like challenge viewers because i feel like the average kid who watches it is like your age and you were probably in diapers when i was on road roll <laughs> oh it's funny i don't so now it's like somebody who's like 40 and I'm like, oh my gosh, wow, we're old. <laughs> um, I've always thought it was awkward and, and my husband always laughs because they'll be like, um, how do I know you? Where do I know you from? And he's like, obviously they know you from the show, but I don't know that that's how they know me. They might know me through a client through work. And then I just look arrogant saying, you must have watched MTV. And they're like, no, I don't watch MTV. Actually, you are you know, a friend of so-and-so. So, I don't know. I just, um, it's always just awkward. I don't know. It doesn't happen very often anymore, though. Not <laughs> in my 20s, so. Yeah, and you made the diaper comment. Just to put into perspective, your last challenge that you did um, was cutthroat. That I was actually in third grade when that was airing. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> How old are you? 20. 20, yeah. So, oh my gosh. What year were you born? Let me do the math. I work in numbers. <laughs> yeah, Two, wow. 2000. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, so you were in a diaper when I was uh, on road rolls. That was 2000. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, yep, that is crazy. So, so nuts. And it feels like a lifetime ago. It really does. Like, I can remember certain things super vivid like it was yesterday but then another part of me is like was that even my life because it seems so 100 percent far removed from my life today wow yeah like a hundred percent yeah but i do want to hear your thoughts now on kind of obviously being removed from the show you're kind of like now would maybe have like an outsider's perspective on this. And I asked like a number of like the uh, old school guests, like I know E Beast was on here that talked about it a little bit. I always ask them kind of like their thoughts on how they're kind of pulling now. Cause they don't pull from real world and road rules anymore. They're kind of pulling from like all these different shows, networks. And now even <laughs> in some cases they're pulling people like from Instagram as crazy as that sounds. Well, really? I mean, I yeah. haven't watched the show in a couple of years because I, I'm more of a Bravo, Real Housewives, again, children <laughs> age. I mean, I, it's just that doesn't interest me anymore. <laughs> Seeing a bunch of 22-year-olds hook up or fight, I'm like, no. It just has zero, I mean, zero interest. Now, watching middle-aged women fight, that's really entertaining to me. <laughs> so, uh, Housewives is a huge thing where I'm at. Yeah. Well, oh, I love it. I think it's on tonight, actually. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I watch that and I, you know, watch like Vanderpump Rules and some stupid shows on Bravo, but uh, Bachelor, but um, I'm just not like really in the MTV shows anymore. Mm. Yeah, so, so. So, so do you let, have any comment on like maybe them pulling from other shows? Like, is it like, do, are you sad to see it kind of turn into what it has with, kind of them doing away with how it normally was? Because it kind of felt like you had to make your initiation to get onto the challenge by completing your road rules or real world season. Yeah, um, I mean, if I'm honest, I don't really care. <laughs> like, at all. I have no opinion. Um, I do remember when they brought in people from Fresh Meat back then. You know, I think that was like around 2005. We felt like... They were just walking in on an opportunity that we felt we earned. But now I'm like, that's stupid too. So, um, I mean, however they want to cast and get their people, if the shows aren't being filmed anymore, I don't think they're doing real world anymore either. Um, then that's, in, that's funny that they're pulling from Instagram. So now I think it's just an athletic based show. I think that the original premise was, real world versus road rules and now it's just the challenge so it doesn't really matter there you go <laughs> but now i want to kind of talk about some of your moments now so the fly swatting elimination <laughs> the fly swatting elimination was one of my uh, favorites and aia was on here and she talked about it a little bit what was your perspective on we we're trying to figure out like the thought process about them kind of throwing that elimination together what did you think of it um well they knew that i the day before I smashed my face on the water and um, that was very unpleasant. So um, that I think they were like, let's do something that's going to hurt her face. <laughs> and then to get hit in the face with the fly swatter, honestly, it only hurt the first like two slaps because then it just kind of went numb. So you can't really feel it after that. So it's, um, I mean, it was stupid. And yeah, I think we had like goggles on and then we just, sla and I like Aya, you know, I liked her then too. And we were just like, let's slap each other in the face. I just remember being pissed. Those are like the moments that made me not want to be on the show anymore. Mm. So. What, like you thought maybe like they were trying to like, um, work things in a certain way, like against you maybe? Um, no, I just, I just felt like the show just got too stupid for me. And, you know, they knew that I was physically hurt. I had black eyes and busted lips. And, um, and then they're like, and I know they have, a. am not stupid. I actually work for a production company today. 
So they have things. So they probably say they had like 10 different like challenges depending on the weather or whatever else or like eliminations. And they were probably like, her face is fucked up and let's go ahead and start slapping it. I mean, there could have been other things. And yeah, it's for TV and all of that. And I get it. I get it. And that's why I didn't want to do it anymore. It's all part of the whole thing. Because at that point, I'm like, now you're just being dicks. You know? Well, so. well no, yeah. And, I, and I've had, like, a couple people on here kind of say similar stuff. I mean, it is a show after all. And I think that mm-hmm. they, they know what's going to benefit them. And Yeah, 100%. Point. And I understand that, like I said, from like working in the industry still, I understand it from that standpoint, but I also understand it as a human being. (laughs) So I'm out, you know, like at that point. And today I would be the absolute worst cast member because I just wouldn't give a shit. I'd just walk. I wouldn't argue. I'd be like, you can have this. I'm not going to get slapped in the face with a fly swatter. Goodbye. Wow, so you seem to have, like, a very different outlook on things then. Did you, it was, like, kind of something that, did you rewatch and maybe be like, all right, well, I was this back then, and then this is how you change your demeanor now? Um, I get very embarrassed seeing older episodes. Um, like, my husband hasn't even seen all of them. I showed him a couple, like, of road rules, because I was like, oh, this was, like, you know, the innocent, naive, fun, it was an experience, and then, like, the challenges just got so much nastier, and, um, you know, you really start to be, be pit against each other with people that are your friends, and then the experience started becoming far more negative than exciting or fun, and the outcome wasn't worth it. It wasn't like we were rolling in the dough. It wasn't like, you know, it just, it all kind of, and I started to realize while I was on the shows, like, I'm not having fun. I'm kind of unhappy. I hate 90% of these people. I want food, like real food. I want a computer. And I just realized, like, all the things weren't balancing anymore. And it was just time for me to, like, walk off. And then after I did, my life got a lot better. It just changed. And I started to make better decisions. And not everything revolved around drama. And today, like, I would never have, I mean, one, I feel like I'm a lot nicer. But I just wouldn't tolerate the things that I did. But I also wouldn't scream about it. I would just leave the room or walk away. Um, I think when you're in your twenties and the show is real popular in the early two thousands, um, fun and exciting and we got to travel. And then as I started getting older, I was like, what am I going to do with my life when this ends? Do I want to be continuously slapped in the face with a fly swatter or like rolling in a mud pit? And then like, yeah. And I just... I know I sound like a bitch and I'm not ungrateful. I'm just like saying I'm over it. You know, it's been, it's been a long time, 10 years since the last show that I did. Um, yeah, I was 30 and that's when I was like, when I hit 30, I'm done. And so like now I'm, I would be, you know, I'm 40 years old. I would be, I have no business like leaping off of buildings or any of that stuff. And none, none of like, the, the fighting and the screaming, like, never today. I just wouldn't. So when I see some of that stuff, I mean, I'm still feisty. You can probably sense that. I mean, I, I, that's just who I am. But I'm also much more aware of how I come across and that it affects my family, my child, my career. Like, I wouldn't be that stupid today. And so when I watch it, I'm like, especially with people that are still doing it, that were doing it when I was doing it. I'm like, at what point is it going to matter to you to get a 401k, to start moving forward in your life, maybe some insurance? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure people have it, but it's just like time to let it go because now you're the old person on the cast. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I feel like that's normal, though, to like kind of grow out of something. Then, and then like when you're in a situation, you'll be like, well, like, why am I here? Like, why am I doing this? You start to, like, question yourself. You know what I mean? And, like, one of the things that I was, like, explaining to somebody, I don't know if it was an interview or, like, I don't, um, but, like, when I was in high school, 
my best friend Shay and I would cruise up and down this busy street in her little uh, Geo Metro convertible, up and down, like 10 times on a Friday night. That was like fun. And we'd stop at Taco Bell in the parking lot and like look for cute boys that were also doing the same thing because that's what you did in the late 90s, apparently. We thought that was fun. And it was like what I'd want to do on a Friday. Now today, if you were like, hey, do you want to cruise up and down a busy street and then hang out in a parking lot at Taco Bell? I tell you to get lost. Like that sounds awful. So what you think is fun at one point in your life changes, you know? So it's like, it doesn't mean I'm not grateful for that experience. I had fun in my 20s doing that. But what I appreciated and thought was fun, you know, taking shots and standing on tables and dancing, I would not find fun today. So it's just, you know, you outgrow things. And like, I think that that's, you know, that's what I thought was fun in high school. That's what I thought was fun in my 20s. I mean, tonight I'm going to a murder mystery dinner. Like, I'm excited about that. That's fun for me today. That does sound kind of fun. Yeah, you know, fun. getting home on a Saturday and getting some Panera bread for lunch. Sounds like a great afternoon. But at 20, that probably wouldn't have been fun. So I just so think is, it changes. Is that kind of like what you're into? Like the Because, like, I like criminal minds, like, I, mean, I don't know if, like, the comparisons there, like, murder, mystery, that's, I don't know. <laughs> well, time. I love Dateline in 2020. Um, but, like, this is at, um, there's a castle here in Kentucky. It's called the Kentucky Castle. And um, it's, like, you get all dressed up, and it's a murder mystery dinner, five-course dinner. Oh, I just can't wait. I'm really excited, so. Wow. <laughs> I don't think my husband is a is as excited as I am, but he's like, I mean, yeah, it sounds cool, but I've been wanting to go forever. So he's taking me. <laughs> <laughs> what about the plunger incident though? Did that kind of uh, contribute towards your feelings towards like, I guess you could say the latter end of your um, Well, the plunger was just gross. I mean, I would react that same way today. I would probably try to hit you with it. Um, that was just gross, but yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that, that was just gross. We had one bathroom that we could use and they told us because toilets are different in Thailand than they are, you know, in the States to not poop in it and flush. And of course people did and, um, it would get clogged up all the time. So that plunger was like used several times a day and then it was in my bed and one, it's disgusting. And I'm like a clean for two. It's mean, and I don't like to be the butt of anybody's joke. So, yeah, I reacted, and so maybe I'd still react that way today. But I would, I would have quit the show. I would have been like, I'm packing my bags. This is gross. I want to go. But yeah, yeah. And I read that like that um, that incident almost um, made you and Sarah partners on the rival season, and that you. I think backed out like a week before filming. Was that, was that true? Do you know? Um, I'm trying to remember. I don't, I, I don't remember that. I don't know. Um, but I don't dislike Sarah. We actually, I apologized to her that same night. Of course that wouldn't have like the bitch, you know, persona. So they didn't show that, but I did apologize to her. I apologized to her after it aired. Like I called her and said, I'm so sorry again. And then I apologized to her before a reunion, like in the green room off camera. I made several apologies to her because I knew I was wrong. I was completely out of line. I was a bitch bully, what I was just complaining about, but I was mad and had misdirected anger. And I've said that, you know, in a lot of different interviews. And, um, but overall, like, I think Sarah's a nice girl, even then. Um, so it was just stupid. I mean, it's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just, it's stupid and it's magnified stupidity. Like, all of that. <laughs> it's just like the things that, you know, we all do stupid stuff and then we move on and forget. And it's just like, oh, shit, I forgot about that. Yep, I did do that. That was dumb. That was dumb. And it's on camera. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. It's all good. But, um, um, yeah, another thing from that season, though, on the ruins was kind of like the dynamic between Wes and Evelyn versus the house. What what was your uh, stance on that? I, I think I was on the same team as them, I think. 
I do remember them getting really mad. Um, but honestly, like if you sent me pictures of different living rooms on the show and I'm someone who loves design, I wouldn't be able to tell you what show it was because <laughs> they all blend and the people blend and like, I can't tell what show is from what now the ruins. I do remember him getting mad. I remember the room, but I couldn't tell you why. I've never been like a repeat watcher of anything. Like I've never owned DVDs because I don't feel like watching a movie seven times or rereading a book. Um, my interest is like, I know what happens. So even watching the shows, I'm like, I lived it. I know what happens. I'm just curious what their version is. And then I'm like, Oh, and then, and I, I, I don't even know where the episodes even are today. I mean, VHS, and I think they're in my parents' attic, so they're probably ruined. I don't even, yeah, I don't know. So I can't, it's so now it's all by memory, and I can't remember. And like I said, I, I don't know what happened to any of my episodes. The DVDs, I think, are in my hall closet in a box. But that VHS is like I gave up on those. <laughs> what about your dynamic, though, with Wes? Were you guys cool? I've always liked Wes. Yeah, he's, um, I, but it's funny because I feel like some of my relationships on the show weren't really accurately portrayed or they wouldn't show that I was like friends with somebody. They would only show my like enemies or something. I don't know. It was like, they just really wanted me to always look like a, you know, like solo. I was independent and on my own from everybody. Like poor lonely Katie. Um, so if I was like, good friends like Coral and I have always been friends. We've ne I mean, never not been friends, but you wouldn't really know it watching the show. And we would go out together in LA and people would be like, you guys are friends. And we're like, yeah. So, but I mean, I always got along with Wes, um, but they might not have showed our conversation. They just love to really focus on my fight with Veronica um, and arguments with Johnny, Kenny and Evan. And, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Wes and Johnny just became friends on this actual past season that just happened. They, uh, I think they've always been friends. It was just kind of their thing, like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know. Wow. So, so that's actually interesting to hear because that's something that I've personally thought, but then guests that I've talked to about it have kind of been like, oh, no, no. Like, Well, I think, think was they genuinely would give each other shit, but like if they saw each other randomly at an airport, I guarantee you they would sit and have a beer together and like talk. It wasn't like, Ugh, I hate you. They knew that their rivalry created attention and it was fun. And they, they genuinely made fun of each other, but I don't think they instant. I mean, they just became friends. I think they've always been friends and it was just like kind of a tongue in cheek type stuff. But what do I know? I've been off it for 10 years. <laughs> so, and it wasn't necessarily like while well, I was on the show. I think it's happened since because I've you know I follow them on social media and stuff. But yeah, and, and you mentioned being gone for a while. Do you still keep in contact with anybody from the show, or you're just like? Eh, um, I talk to Trishel all the time. And I was texting her with her last night about um, the Bachelor, uh, the Bachelorette, and that she's fucking nuts. Um, <laughs> And, uh, so, yeah, and then, you know, I talked to her, uh, I keep in touch a little bit with Tori, a little bit with Jillian, a little bit with Eric, um, on social media, yeah, but, like, as far as, like, talking to people, pretty much Trishel, for the most part, but we've been friends for 20 years, and, um, 99.9% .9 of the things we talk uh, talk about have zero to do with how we met, which was through the shows. <laughs> like, what are you wearing to the murder mystery? And then I'll show her a couple outfits and she's gonna be like, oh my God, that's so bad. You need to wear this. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, but we've stayed friends. And then, you know, everyone's all talked to Derek. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've just, it's weird. It was such a huge part of my life. And now it's like, boop. <laughs> well, well, now um, Mark Long's kind of tried to get all those people back together for this OG show. Um, mm -hmm. You were obviously contacted for it, I'd assume. Are you planning on doing it? Have you kicked around the idea? Or um, 
I mean, one, I really doubt they'd cast me because I've openly said I would be a horrible cast member um, because I'm not going to be who they want me to be or who I was. Like, I just won't. I'll go home. I'm not doing it. I'm not taking the bait. I don't need this shit. It's not paying my bills. Goodbye. Um, I don't. I, I mean, I, I just said, yeah, let me know who's going the day, you know, how long it would have to be really short. There's no way I'd go on a show without a phone. Um, I have a five-year-old I'm married. Like I like to say goodnight and hello to my family. So if that's not, if that wouldn't be possible, then it would just be an easy no and life would go on as normal. Um, not interested in extreme competitions. So that's why I'm like, and I, I would just need to know more details, but it's looking like a no. I mean, just mm. my husband's like, would you want to do that? I'm like, I don't think I do. And then I'm asking Trishel, would you go? Well, I'll go if you go. Well, how about I'm not sleeping in a bunk bed? I'm 40. Okay. I want a real bedroom. <laughs> I need to be a or just like a normal, sane adult. <laughs> and I want a phone so I can say hi to my family. But if it's the same crap as it was, like, you're willing to put up with that so i'm just not today well there you have it folks <laughs> so i guess i'm still bitchy guys <laughs> that's still that's still there although I, i'm nicer too that makes sense. <laughs> uh, thank you again for coming on here and for the people watching this please comment something nice for katie down below and thank you again katie no problem talk to you soon thank you